Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church's worship on this October 4th, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, or what we like to uh, remember as the blessing of the Animal Sunday. Today is St. Francis of Assisi Day, the patron saint of animals and those who are poor. And so we today we worship with our furry, feathered, scaled kiddos. So we invite you to have your pet with you today at the end of service. We'll be able to pray a blessing upon our pet. Our conviction that God has made in us all unique and valuable means that we welcome you. We welcome you to bring your whole self with your own perspectives, abilities, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, and cultural background to this community where all we belong and have a purpose. At Emmanuel Lutheran Church, we are a community through whom God is transforming lives by sharing our faith in God's love and grace. Again, good to have you with us. A special welcome to our visitors. At this time, we invite you to into a moment of silence to prepare your hearts and minds for worship.
see we have a little technical difficulty, so give us a minute to pull up that song, All Creatures Worship God Most High. In the meantime, uh, we are going to hear the scripture from Isaiah. So Sheila, if you would come forward and read our scripture verse for us. Thank you. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. Was more, what more was there to do for my vineyard than I have not done for it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is house of Israel and the people of Judah are his blessed planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, that video of the uh, gathering hymn, All Creatures Worship God Most High, uh, is not working. Um, and so we are going to move on to our children's message. We invite all children forward to uh, listen to the story, one of my very favorite stories, The Old Turtle.
louder and louder. Stop! The new voice spoke. It rumbled like a thunder, and it whispered softly like butterfly stinger. The voice seemed to come from, why, it seemed to come from old turtle. Now, oh, how old turtle hardly ever said anything, and certainly never argued about things like God. But now, old turtle began to speak. God is indeed deep, she said to the fish in the sea, and like higher than high, she told the mountain. He is swift and free as the wind, and still and solid as great rocks, she said to the breezes and the stones. She is the life of the world, Bert said to the girl, always spoke God, yet beyond the thunderous twinkling light, she told the ants and the stars, God is gentle and powerful, above all things and with all things. God is all that we dream of and all that we seek, said Old Turtle, all that we would come from and all that we can find. God is. Old Turtle had never said so much before. All the beings of the world were surprised and became very quiet. But Old Turtle had one more thing to say. There will soon be a new family of beings in the world, she said, and they will be strange and wonderful. They will be reminders of all that God is. They will come in many colors and shapes with different faces and different ways of speaking. Their thoughts will soar to the stars, but their feet will walk the earth. They will possess many powers. They will be strong yet tender, a message of love from God to the earth and from the earth back to God. And the people came. They forgot that they were a message of love and a prayer from the earth. And they began to argue about who knew God and who did not, and where God was and was not, and whether God was or was not. And often the people misused their power and hurt one another or killed one another, and they hurt the earth, until finally even the forest began to die. and the rivers, and the oceans, and the plants, and the animals, and the earth itself, because the people could not remember who they were and where God was, until one day there came a voice, like the growling of thunder, but as soft as butterflies neighbor. Please stop. The voice seemed to come from the mountain, who rumbled. Sometimes I see God swimming in the dark blue depths of the sea, and from the ocean he tried, he is often among the snow-capped peaks, reflecting the sun. From the stone, he said, I sometimes feel her breath as she goes by. And from the breeze, who whispers, I feel his still presence as I dance among the rocks. And the star says, God is very close. And the island says, his love touches everything. And after a long, lonesome, and scary time, the people listened and began to hear and to see God in one another and in the beauty of all the earth. An old turtle smiled, and so did God. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O God. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then, he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. 
But the tenants seized his slaves, and beat one, killed another, and stoned yet another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? The leader said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us open with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This image of a vineyard is an ancient image. It's an image of one who tends the land, tills it, cares for it, lovingly picks up stones and removes them one by one to prepare the soil. Of one who plants the best choice seed in this land and then decides to protect the land by building a hedge and a watchtower so that it can be looked after and it can ensure that uh, other, other people won't come in or other animals won't come in and destroy the crops and the vineyard. This is a long process. This is probably a two-year process of really uh, caring for and tending this land. This vineyard owner is a loving owner that carefully tends the land. But in Isaiah, like in many of the prophets, this image of the vineyard ends up producing wild grapes. Wild grapes that cannot be used, that the vineyard owner did not plant. And so the vineyard owner says, I will break down the wall. I will destroy the watchtower. Let the wild animals and the foreign neighbors have you. The consequences of producing wild grapes. And then the prophet Isaiah turns, turn this image on its head by announcing to the people of Israel and Judah that you are God's beloved vineyard. The vineyard that God tenderly produced, brought together as one people, cultivated uh, the law of God and the covenant so that a mutual relationship back and forth for the sake, for the sake of producing justice and righteousness. However, instead of producing justice, mishpat, the people produce bloodshed. Mispah. Instead of uh, instead of 
righteousness. Siddhartha, the people, shouted out with cries. Siddhartha. The vineyard of God that was lovingly tilled and planted did not produce what God intended. And so you hear from the prophet a cry of lament from God. God taking the people to task and sending them to court. These vineyard images and court images were very, very common in ancient Israel. They understood it. Fast forward to the time of Jesus, and we have another parable about a vineyard. This time, Jesus tells us the story of a vineyard owner who once again cares for the land, plants the land, prepares the land, and then, as is customary in Jesus' day, leases it to tenants, to those who would work the land and then pay a portion of the produce back to the landowner, remembering that these tenants do not own the land. They are stewards that are to care for the land, to see that the the good fruits are produced. And the vineyard produces. And so then the vineyard owner sends servants to go and receive the portion back for the vineyard owner. And what do the tenants do? They forget that they do not own the land. They forget that they are called to be stewards of the land. They forget to return the portion. And they turn to the most extremes. They turn to violence. And they, they stone, and they beat, and they even kill. And you would think that this vineyard owner would be completely foolish, that thinking that uh, I can send more servants. If I send more, maybe then they will respond. Because usually what happens is the vineyard owner would go and just uh, decimate the tenants and push them off the land, and they'd lose everything. But this vineyard owner is different. He sends more, and then finally he sends his son, thinking, my son can reason with them. And equally foolish are the tenants who seem to reason that if they kill the son, they will suddenly own the land. There is such a fractured relationship there. But Jesus doesn't want to focus on foolishness of everyone, the mercy of the vineyard owner, or the foolishness and evil nature of the tenants. Jesus wants to focus on the cornerstone, that the sun is the cornerstone. And here he brings it to the leaders themselves and says, God has called you to care for the people of Israel who are once again imaged as the vineyard. And you, you where I where God has called for justice, you have brought bloodshed. Where God has called for righteousness, the poor of the people cry out in need and in starvation and under oppression. You are not caring for the vineyard. And so you will be one who is crushed on this cornerstone, the one who reveals to you the depth of your sin, your brokenness, the how far you are from God. Beloved children of God, if we are honest, this is a story that we recognize. This is a story we recognize, especially, I think, those of us in the Pacific Northwest. Because when we look at the history of the Pacific Northwest, we look at this beautiful, fruitful land that God has created with beautiful mountain peaks where the wild animals run rampant and the forests are growing and the underbrush is nurturing all the creatures from the smallest to the largest. Where the depths of the ocean and the rivers teeming with life and with salmon and other fish, or the land that produces a variety of native plants for people to, to enjoy and cultivate and eat. 
And indeed, the people of the land, the Native Americans who belonged to this land, they tended the land. They actually uh, did some controlled burning of the, of the forests and the plains in order to produce uh, places to be able to better hunt small game and to uh, forage for the natural native species and to even cultivate. But they were more nomadic. And so the forests grew up uh, rather controlled with uh, the fire-tolerant trees growing strong and, and needing that fire to be able to continue to grow and to continue the biodiversity of the land. But then Western cultures came in and brought with them different things, such as horses. Horses that changed the culture of the Native American people so that they no longer focus on fishing for salmon and, and foraging through the forest for the native species, but they hunted more and more buffalo and they went to different regions and the wars between the tribes started to rise up. In addition then, uh, the people came out, missionaries came out to give the people of the land Christianity to save their souls. Instead, they brought with them illness. They brought with them plague. They brought with them smallpox and chicken pox that decimated the people. Where there was once 300,000 people who were Native American in the United States land, it got down to 60,000. And instead of encouraging the people to be Christian, instead, they managed to encourage other Westerners to come. And suddenly, thousands of people converged, and they cleared the trees and the land for, uh, for, for the grazing of cattle and sheep. And then they, they, they developed refineries and mines to harvest all the, the precious metals that were found. And let us not forget, right next door we have Fort Vancouver. It's a reminder of the Hudson's Bay Company and the different content companies that decimated the population of the beavers and the river otters that carefully stewarded the streams and the rivers so that the fish could have pockets of environments where the water didn't run so fast and they could spawn and they could thrive. And the decimation of the beaver population so that people could have fine fur hats in foreign countries so that people could make money. It's the decimation of the population of beavers so that other companies and other peoples would not come in and compete. The capitalism that ruled the day changed the landscape of our land forever. And on and on and on the story goes. We came and we built homes and we built railroads and we logged and we logged and we changed the forest so the forest started to die. And the fire starts to get more frequent and burn hotter. And now, this summer, we've literally been on fire. And since the 1980s, we've tried to turn around. We've tried to recognize more and more the Native peoples who can teach us about stewarding the land and that this is their land. We have tried to recognize more and more the practices that can care better for the earth, such as maybe not necessarily all be vegetarian, but eating maybe less meat, or eating more locally, or driving less, or uh, stewarding the dams, or even, even getting rid of some of the dams so that the salmon populations can increase again. Caring for the animals in our midst. On this blessing of the Animal Sunday, we confess. We are invited to confess that we come from a long line of humans that have been poor 
are stewards of the earth. And that this is God's land, not ours, but we have forgotten it. We have forgotten that this is God's earth. And then we get this beautiful corner of it to steward together. As people from all different cultures, we can learn from one another to care for the animals that we can also learn from. From the beavers, we learn how to create environments for the fish. From the bears, we learn about the beauty of the native species rather than the hundreds and thousands of foreign species that we have brought in that have no predators and prey and that overtake the entire landscape. From the animals, we can learn how to better care for the vineyard of God and together. When Christ says that he is the cornerstone, when we proclaim that Christ is the cornerstone, we start with the fact that on the cornerstone, we trip and fall and get crushed under the weight of our confession. It's a necessary confession, folks, because until we see that we have mistakenly thought that we owned the earth and could do anything we want with it, we will never be able to be liberated. But to be liberated to actually experience the good fruits of the vineyard that God lovingly created. We will never be liberated to be able to recognize the tears and the sorrows of a God who loves the vineyard as much as you love your most beloved relationship, your most beloved possession. Whatever you love most in this world, however you cultivated it, however you cared for it, however you tended it, that doesn't even compare to the depth of God's love for you. And not just for you, for all people. And not just for all people, but for all animals. And not just for all animals, but for all parts of the land and people. When we forget who the vineyard owner is, when we forget that this is a a God who almost seems foolish because God continues to let us be crushed by the consequences of the devastation that we wreak, but always, always to offer us second chances, always to bring forth from us goodness, always to say, I will not give up on you. When we realize that this is a God who is a loving God and a loving vineyard owner, then I hope and pray that our love in return for God will help us grieve with God. What is it that you grieve? How do you grieve in this beautiful Pacific Northwest the loss of landscapes, the loss of peoples who have been uh, natives here, the loss of, of animals and species that are being decimated? What do you grieve? But we don't stop with the grief. We always remember that when we get crushed by the cornerstone, we get broken open. Broken open for something new to be built. Because this cornerstone is not just something we stumble on, but this cornerstone is something that serves as the foundation for something new. So beloved children of God, this beautiful Pacific Northwest is still beautiful. It's still teeming with life. And God is still continuing to create and build, build. And we are invited to be a part. So what are you caring for? What are you caring for to build up the kingdom of God in this time and in this place? Are you caring for the air by driving less, eating more locally? Perhaps producing less methane by eating less meat? Because 
how to produce a lot of methane. Are you caring for the soil by gardening and tending and lovingly uh, enriching it with compost? Are you caring for the animals? Many of us in this congregation have little uh, furry kiddos, but some of us have feathered kiddos, and some of us have scaled kiddos, and maybe some of us have multiple-legged kiddos. But we have these animals that we love, that we tend, and that we nourish? How do we extend that nourishment out through policies and through caring for the rivers and the streams around us so that not just our cats and dogs are taken care of, but our fish are taken care of too? How about our children that we care for, our human children? How are we caring for the land around them and teaching them to do the same so that together, we can build something through the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit that is a stronger, more beautiful vineyard than ever before, teeming with new life. How are you caring for the vineyard of God? How are you stewarding it? How is this building the kingdom of God? Beloved children of God, may the cornerstone Be the foot of the cross where we can kneel down in confession about how we fall short. We can grieve with God who grieves over the devastation, and then we can be broken open and offered the grace to uh, work and tend the vineyard as faithful stewards who recognize that it is not ours to do with as we will. It is God. A God who loves us so much that in return we love this God. And when you love someone, you love what they love. So let us care for creation, the animals, the peoples, the landscapes, with a tender love of a follower of Christ who knows that on this cornerstone, new life, being built and the kingdom of God that is grounded in justice and righteousness is being manifested every single day more and more. And now may the peace of Christ which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the same Christ Jesus now and always. Amen. Please enjoy this rendition of Mothering God in Case of Birth.
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your light that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who are hungry. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation, especially Francis of Assisi, whom we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and spirit. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially those on our prayer list. We pray for Lori and Christine. We pray for Brian and God's continued healing. We pray for Mike. For Kayla, healing from her car accident. For Corpo. And for what else do the people of God pray today? For all students, teachers, and families struggling to uh, conduct school online or some in-person classes. For all for those still suffering from the wildfires and the For those suffering from COVID and the aftermath of having COVID and who've lost loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire this community of faith with the wisdom to care for the needs of your creatures. Strive for just policies that protect life and serve our community and one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our 
Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Christ's life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are bold this morning to pray that risky prayer that Christ first taught us. That prayer for God's kingdom and God's will to be done, not ours. That prayer for us to learn to give and receive forgiveness, and that prayer for all to have enough. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved children of God, you are invited to set your altar table if you so choose, and to commune with us from a distance. Ideally, we would be gathered together, and to commune together in community. But we know the Spirit of God can unite us in one body of Christ wherever we are. So again, you are invited to join us for communion if you so choose. Receive the bread of life. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen.
online, I sent out these uh, cards with Francis of Assisi on them, and on the back is a blessing of the animals. We take a moment to bless all animals of the earth. If you so choose, you may extend a hand of blessing, imagining God's spirit blessing all of the earth and all its creatures. You who created all animals and called them good, bless again all your creatures who come to us as a blessing, fashioned of fur or a feather or fin, formed of flesh that breathes with your own breath, that you have made from sheer delight, that you have given in dazzling variety. Bless them who curl themselves around our hearts, who twine themselves throughout our days, who companion us in our labor, and who call us to come and play. Bless them who will never be entirely tamed, and so remind us that you love what is wild, that you rejoice in what lives close to the earth, that your heart beats in the heart of these creatures you have entrusted to our care. In the name of the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now you are invited to lay your hand on your own animal if you have one. And to pray a prayer of blessing together uh, on your animal. Ready? May the Lord bless you with health, strength, strength Life and loving companionship. Shalom. Amen. And you may make the sign of the cross if you so choose. And now, beloved children of God, other animals, receive God's blessing. May the Lord make you an instrument of peace. Where there is hatred, may you sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. May our divine master grant that you may know not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love the Lord and care for all animals. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. A brief time of announcements. I want to say thank you to those who helped with worship today, Richard and Peppy. It's always harder when you have a little technical difficulty. So thank you for always hanging in there with us. And thank you, Sheila, for being here today. And for, to Sharon and Candace for providing uh, different things on video. It is a joy to be with you uh, again today. We have some announcements. First of all, thank you to all of those who attended our annual meeting of the congregation last uh, Sunday. We did choose a color scheme for the church sanctuary for a carpet color and a chair color, and then we're working on painting colors. The uh, task force that is helping with this uh, is going to, at least some people, is calling for volunteers to come on Thursday at 9 o'clock, if you so choose, if you can help at all, please come. We're going to start unfastening the pews, and we're going to start trying to get rid of the pews to uh, prepare for getting new carpet and for painting, and I think there's a few other things that they'll be doing on Thursday, so please come at 9 if you can help in any way. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and or talk to Dave Shields, because if you let me know, I'll probably just send you to him. So, um, also, we closed our capital campaign. So congratulations to the Marbles for receiving the beautiful raffles quilt from uh, Diane Rutherford. And we hope and pray that you enjoy it. Uh, and thank you to the Memorial Fund Committee for giving from their general funds uh, 
$5,000 so that we closed our campaign at about $43,000, which is just awesome. So thank you everyone for your gifts and offering and support. Also, we voted last week to become a Reconciling in Christ congregation, and it was unanimous, which is remarkable and wonderful that we see that this is one next step in being fully welcoming and inclusive of all, and that all really means all. So thank you for that. Um, our application to Reconciling Works is in process. Uh, what else? We passed the budget. So you'll be hearing about that in letters to come. We also will still be having our book study at 12.30 on Monday, 6.30 Bible study on Tuesday, and on Wednesday at 5.30, how to be an anti-racist book study. If you need those chapters, look in your newsletter. Uh, was there other announcements that I forgot? Worship and music meeting tomorrow. Worship and music meeting is tomorrow at 6 p.m. on the Zoom link. And so please join us for that. We are going to begin a sign up for people to come just in groups of five um, here for worship. And so we will figure out what that looks like. So look for those announcements. Was there another announcement? Oh, we do have an outreach team meeting. Outreach team meeting after the fellowship time at about 1130 today online on Zoom. Um, and we do have our fellowship hour right after. Thank you for joining us. Is there any other announcements? Okay. God bless you. Have a beautiful, wonderful day. And, oh, I do have one more thing. Um, don't forget that the blessing of the animals is going to be this afternoon at 3 p.m. It's a drive-by or a walk-by. So please come and bring your, um, your friend of any variation, and we will bless it. So thank you. God bless.